the hills of Beverly. And when they do, you'll run into a friend of theirs you've met. That good old friend with filter blend, Winston Cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. That's fine right there, Mr. Brewster. Get through! You can start bringing them things out now. Oh, boy, I can't wait to get back to California. I ain't been warm clean through since we got here. Get through! Take it easy. <laughs> We've been sleeping on a hard floor. It'd be awful nice to get in the warm bed for a change. Uh, I'll take it, Jethro. Jethro, I said take it easy. Granny ready? Yeah, she's just putting on her gator. I'll bring it right out. Well, I hope you'll come visit us in California. We'd be mighty glad to see you, especially Pearl. Her and Jeff Reed coming to stay with us. <laughs> Let me get my shoe on, you big overgrown moose. You can put it on in the car, Granny. We's in a hurry. We can't leave until somebody finds Ellie Mae. Where is she? She took to the woods early this morning with those two timber wolves that she let sleep under her bed. Yeah, I'll find her. By doggy, it's a good thing we're leaving. One more night and she'd be baying at the moon. <laughs> now, you two rascals have got to stay away from Maggie and her family. You hear me? Is it a deal? All right. Now, don't you forget it. You seen her, Maggie? Give their word. What's more, Rita's gonna keep an eagle eye on them. And if they goes to pestering you, she's gonna snatch them both. Ain't you, Frida? <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could come to Beverly Hills and live with us. But I reckon it'd be too long a trip for you and your youngin'. But I'll come back and see you in the spring. Hey, me. Over here, Pa. You got them wolves with you? Oh, well, they won't pester you none. And that no biting promise goes for my pa, too. <laughs> Hello there, Maggie. Hey, honey. Mr. Brewster's waiting, and we got to pick up Pearl and Jess Reen and drive clean to the airport. Think Pearl and Mr. Brewster are getting married? Well, no, not yet. Uh, maybe never. But Pearl's satisfied. Everybody in town seen him propose to her. Now she can leave town with her chin up and her head thrown back, proud and happy. I'll bet you Cousin Jethreen ain't happy. She says she ain't going to California and leave her sweetie jazz boat a pew. She's powerful in love with that little feller. Yeah, I reckon Jethreen will do pretty much what her ma tells her to. That Pearl's a mighty strong-willed woman. Jethreen's pretty new time for them to pick us up. Now, no more sulking. You're coming to California. I don't want to hear no more argument about it. Okay, Ma. I'm coming. <laughs> what in the world have you got there? It's a trunk, Ma. Well, I can see that, but what you got in it? Well, I got some clothes and some shoes and, and some food and some water. I forgot the water. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> <Jack> Bodine. <laughs> Miss Bodine, that daughter of yours is a mighty strong-willed girl. Oh, Did she put you in later? I think so. I told her I couldn't go to California with her. And that's the last thing I remember. Oh, don't let him get away. Jeff Green, you put him down. This minute. What's the matter with you? Why, that poor boy could suffocate in that trunk without no air. <laughs> Jeff Green, am I going to have to take a switch to you? Jeff Green, honey, like I told you, I can't just pick up and go. I got a big business going here. Well, couldn't you be a traveling salesman in California? Darling, it's taken me years to build up this territory. And this is my big selling season. Well, I can knock down a hundred dollars in the next two or three months. And the fellow don't walk away from a gold mine like that. Well, in sense, Jethreen. But Uncle Jed's a millionaire. Cousin Ellis says they got plenty of room in that mansion. He could stay there with us. Jethreen, I got my pride. 
Well, I'd rather die than take charity from my sweetheart's kinfolk. Oh, but sure you can write to one another. Of course. And I'll be here when you get back. Oh, there they are. Now, Jeffrey, you get ready to leave. Oh, Mr. Brewster, I thought it was my boy Jethro, Cousin Jed, come to pick up the suitcase. Well, no, I, I asked him to let me come for them. I, I was to see. This, uh, this may be my last chance to see you alone for a moment. Alone? You? you me? Us? <laughs> Why would you? Well, first, I want to thank you for publicly breaking our engagement after I lost my head as I did last night. Oh, shut up. I, I didn't mean it when I said yes. It was just nerves and the excitement of the moment. Well, you were very sweet about yeah, it. Yeah, well, well, but now that my head is clear and I'm thinking straight, well, I realize I couldn't get married right yeah. now. Well, some man would lose a wonderful wife. My goodness, I got, I got family obligations, you know. Why, Cousin Jed's been after me three or four months to come to Beverly Hills and get that wild daughter of his proper dress and acting like a lady. I'm going to miss you, Mrs. Bodine. Yes, well, he's in desperate need of me. I don't know what come over me last evening, but now that I had a good night's sleep in the morning coffee, got my wits together, well, I could just laugh at myself for, for even considering marriage. You know, Mrs. Bodine, I... I just want to say that I think you're a splendid woman, and I'm sure our paths will cross again. And Well, I'd consider it a, a great honor if you'd allow me to kiss you goodbye. Kiss me? Well, I hardly think there'd be anything wrong with that. Is that a new Annie Pearl? Oh, my God. Annie Pearl, look. Uh, Jeffrey's in there saying goodbye to his sweetie, Jasbo Depew. So why don't you go in and say goodbye to him, too? Huh? All right. I ain't never met him. Jethreen, you're just going to have to get it through your head. I cannot go to California, and that's that. Howdy. Well, hi, Cousin Ellie. This here's my sweetie, Jasbo Depew. Howdy, Jasbo. And a great big howdy to you. <laughs> this girl is the cousin you've been telling me about? Yeah, Jasbo. She's the one we'll be staying with in California. Well, poke me another air hole, baby, and let's go. I just had a call from Brewster and Tulsa. The Clampets are on their way home. Jethro? Oh, I mean the Clampets. <laughs> yes, and they're bringing a cousin and her daughter along. There'll be six of them. I think I'd better order an extra limousine. Chief, if I may suggest, the personal touch is very important to these people, and they are the bank's largest depositors. I would be happy to volunteer my car and myself. I can take at least half the load. Jethro. <laughs> <laughs> and the luggage. See, Chief. I have bucket seats, and Jethro is quite a bucketful. <laughs> How's about three apiece, Chief? Fine. We'll be ready to leave the airport about noon. Entendu, mon capitaine. Time to leave for the airport, Miss Hathaway. Right. Don't be alarmed, Chief. This is just for the Clampets. I have no intention of disrupting office discipline with my seductive appearance. What a remarkable change. Three hours in the beauty salon. Tell me, are you busy tonight? <laughs> because if you're not, I'd like you to work and make up those three hours. <laughs> They could have missed the plane. Oh, impossible. Brewster phoned me after he put him on board. Oh, miss. Uh, are there any more passengers aboard? 
Yes, there are uh, six. Well, they appear to be um, hillbillies. Was there anything wrong with them? Oh, no. You see, we served lunch before we arrived, and they refused to leave the plane until they helped do the dishes. <laughs> and we served 120 lunches. <laughs> well, here they come. Flight 201 for Chicago and New York is now loaded at the East Concourse. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your food with us. And thank you for doing the dishes. You sure you don't want us to wash the windows? It won't take long if we all pitch in. <laughs> Thank you. Drysdale, howdy. Welcome home, Mr. Clappy. This here is my cousin, Pearl Bodie. Oh, howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Oh, excuse my wet hand. Oh, it's quite all right. Well, how did you enjoy your plane ride? I don't believe it. I plain don't believe it. It's a miracle. Oh, well, it ain't nothing. You ain't seen nothing, Pearl. Wait till we ride on that escalator. Yes. Yeah. Well, my car's out in front, Mr. Clavitt. Come on. <laughs> Mon amour. <laughs> that ain't my name. <laughs> Who are you? I am a wild and mysterious gypsy. <laughs> I've come to take you away to my gypsy camp. <laughs> you got some food there? <laughs> Well, I can't stay long, but I am kind of hungry. <laughs> Help and wash all them dishes. Give me quite an appetite. <laughs> Jet, them stairs is moving. We're having a California earthquake. Uh, Earl, them stairs are supposed to move like that. What for? I don't know, but uh, that's what they call an escalator. Only thing is, last time we was here, they was moving the other way. <laughs> come on. Well, we ain't gonna get on them crazy stairs. Oh, come on, Pearl. Once you're on there, you like it. Oh. <laughs> Welcome home, Ellie Mae. Howdy, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> Welcome home, Granny. Thank you. Well, where's Jeff Reed? Last I saw of her, she was still eating. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, that wasn't bad, was it? No, it was fun. Let's go up and ride down again. Oh, no, Pearl. Uh, it's fun, all right, but it just ain't worth fighting your way back upstream. <laughs> Jason, this place is haunted. A ghost just went through that door. <laughs> they don't ghost, Pearl. That's what they call uh, electric eye. They got them all over out here. Well... You go first. I ain't taking no chances on crowding a spook. <laughs> Come on, Ray. I go get on this dog, Ray. Oh, howdy there. So this is California. It's so warm. And the air smells different from the mountains. Yep, looks different, too. Out here, you can see what you're breathing. <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot of body to it. I tell you, Pearl, there's some days when you can cut it with a knife. But don't try it, because it gets a knife awful smudgy. <laughs> <laughs> we can wait here in Mr. Drydale's car till the rest of them come. I'll go with Martin and take the luggage around to the service entrance. I can't believe it. I've seen pictures, but I just can't believe it. It ain't real. It's real, Ma. <laughs> Jeff Reed, don't you knock no holes in your Uncle Jed's mansion. Ah, she can't hurt it, Pearl. Wait till you see inside, Pearl. It's the biggest bunch of indoors you ever did see. <laughs> <laughs> at the airport? <laughs> no, you got to climb those yourself. Come on, Jeffrey. I'll show you outside. Granny, how do you ever wash that thing? Ain't washed it yet, Pearl. Oh, well, don't you worry. I'll do it. 
<laughs> a pearl, uh, uh, now this here is what they call the drawing room. Drawing. Wait till you see this pie ante. The whole thing is hand painted. Yeah, Pearl. Ain't that just about the prettiest pie ante you ever did see? It's got pictures on it. Look at the dust. <laughs> Randy, did you run up them curtains? No, they was here when we came. Well, as soon as we get settled, I'll run up some new ones. <laughs> and windows ain't been washed in weeks. Well, uh, Pearl, you know, it's a mighty big house. It takes a miracle woman to get it all done. <laughs> Looks like I've come just in time, huh? <laughs> Where's the kitchen, Jack? I'll show you. <laughs> 32 rooms in this house, and something tells me it ain't gonna be big enough. <laughs> Paul, uh, where's St. Pearl? Well, her and Granny's in that little room they call a butler's pantry. Huh. This is a nice enough kitchen, Granny, but it sure ain't as big as you led me to believe. Pearl, this is the one with the stove. The stove is... Oh. This here's the barest cupboard I ever did see, but I reckon if you ain't got a stove, you don't need food. Get out of this room. Well, Pearl, what do you think? Well, I think I should have brought my coal oil stove. <laughs> For your information, Miss Pearl, we got gas. Well, I don't wonder. Nothing but uncooked food. <laughs> Your pump is stuck tight. It ain't been used so long, Pearl. You know, Granny, we got a lot of work to do to get this kitchen in shape. Granny, did you tell Pearl this is a kitchen? I ain't been able to tell Pearl nothing. She won't quit flapping her trap long enough. <laughs> Pearl, come on. <laughs> this here is the kitchen. That there is what they call a pantry. My stars and guards. <laughs> what? Well, a person could feed an army in here. Well, the way those two young'uns of yours eat, that's just what you'll have to do. Uh, Pearl, uh, look at this stove here. All you have to do to get fire is uh, turn one of them little things right here without lighting no matches nor nothing. Now, look at here. This here lights this one here. And this one uh, lights this one. And this one lights this one here. And this one lights this one. Oh, what do you think of that, Pearl? I declare, I'm just speechless. That'll be the day. <laughs> oh, 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 look at this icebox here. Just take a look. You ever seen anything like that before? Look at that. Well, I don't like to mention it yet, but somebody left the light a-burning in there. <laughs> I reckon some people just don't care how they waste other people's money. The light comes on when you open the door. You don't say. He pert near didn't with you pounding your gums. <laughs> Girl, Jeffrey wants to know where's the suitcases, especially the big one with the sandwiches in it. <laughs> but Jethro said he'd bring in the suitcases. Jethro. What happened to my boy? Where's Jethro? Well, the last time I seen him, a dark-haired gypsy woman was a taking him away. <laughs> Gypsy's got him. My baby's been carried off by the gypsy. <laughs> oh, sorry, Pearl. One meal and they'll carry him right back. <laughs> I have a little bit mixed up. Besides, Jethro is big enough to take care of himself. Yeah, my ma's in here. Oh, Come on in. My baby, where you been? With the gypsy woman? We stopped to get something to eat. I told you one meal and they'd bring them back. <laughs> you gypsy kidnapper. I'm gonna snatch you both. Get out of the way. What you doing being a gypsy? Just a little harmless fun, Mr. Clampett. When Jethro failed to recognize me, I couldn't resist continuing the masquerade. Uh, ma, this here's Miss Hathaway, Mr. Drysdale's secretary. I'm happy to know you, Mrs. Bottini. I have brought your son back safe and sound. Well, thank you. Yeah. Is your hair back? <laughs> How about staying for supper, Miss Hathaway? Oh, I wouldn't want to be in any trouble. Well, I figured with company to table, there wouldn't be so much trouble. <laughs> well, you taste good as sweet potato pie. Ain't nobody can make sweet potato pie like my ma. Now, they is both very fine, extra good cooks, but uh, Pearl not knowing her way around the kitchen, I reckon. Oh, that... well, don't you worry none about that, Jed. I'll have this kitchen put in order in no time. It ain't out of order. Millie, <laughs> you get rid of the ants. I'll start the cooking. What ants? Start with your Aunt Pearl. Well, I like that. I'll bet you you won't like what I'm going to say next. Girls, I got an idea. Now, Pearl, 
You know, they ain't nothing more soothing than advertising than a mess of piano playing and sweet singing before supper. But I figure a body can't be doing that and cooking at the same time. No, I don't think they hardly could, Jeff. Right. Now, if somebody will get Mr. Drysdale, we'll all sit around while supper's cooking and listen to the kind of music that has made the name of Bodine famous from Oxford to Eureka Spring. <laughs> supper time. Want me to start setting the table? Yeah. And let's use that big company table in the fancy eating room. Okay, Paul. Uh, you help me get the chairs around it? Why, sure. Leave the door open so as we can hear the music. Okay, Paul. I'm kind of glad we got company so we can show off this fine eating table. <laughs> yeah, we ain't used it since Thanksgiving. Has Granny figured out a way to get this tablecloth unstuck yet? No, she ain't, Paul. She even tried to steam it off. <laughs> she couldn't get it loose. She said if she didn't know better, she'd think somebody stuck it down on purpose. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got all my pot passers notched. They come in real handy. See? See a pot out there if you want, you can uh, reach for it and get it or pass it without bothering the fellow sitting next to you. Yeah, the good thing about this table is things can't go a sliding off. Oh, I gotta tell Granny. Since we're gonna use this table, she can leave the vittles right in the pots. No, oh, he's a pearl getting fancy. <laughs> Ever see anybody bake a fluffier pie than that one? <laughs> Some folks don't know that cake is fluffy and pies is juicy. <laughs> it fell. You did that on purpose, Pearl Bodine. <laughs> My pie can't fall. It can't, huh? Just in. <laughs> Granny! Pearl, like you, I ain't never heard you, you play the piano any prettier than you're a plane that right. <laughs> you ain't playing the piano. You betcha I ain't! I got enough money to take everybody out to a nice eating place. Mr. Clampett, with your money, you can buy the finest restaurant in Beverly Hills. Before the battle's over, that's just what I might have to do. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Sit down to the piano, Jeff Green, and play us some nice, pretty after supper music. All right, Uncle Jay. Now the Winston, Mr. Clampett. Well, doggies. It's putting the Winston in gold packages now. What does that D stand for? Delicious? No, Drysdale. You see, that's my own personal cigarette case. Well, now, ain't that something? I'd be pleased to make you a present of one of those if you like it. Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. Drysdale, but I reckon Winston tastes just as good whether it's wrapped in gold or the regular package. That's true. That's mighty pretty, Jeff Reen. Play that again. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. The 
of Beverly Hillbillies has been presented by Winston. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we hope you will try Winston, because Winston tastes good.